the Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. This is the Financial Survival Network. Financial Survival Network is presented to you by Regal Assets. Buy and sell physical gold and silver through your existing retirement plan, 100% tax-free with Regal Assets. If you want to include physical gold or silver in your existing IRA or old 401k, request your free investment kit, which was recently featured in the Forbes and Smart Money Wall Street Journal magazines. Call toll-free 855-678-6620, 855-678-6620, or visit regalassets.com. Have the elites beaten a retreat? Are they no longer fixing the gold and silver markets? Or are they simply on vacation at their villas in the south of France? Well, to answer those questions and much more, Bill Murphy of Gata.org, Gold Antitrust Action, is with us now. Bill, welcome back to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Uh, good to be here, Kerry. Thank you. And thank you. We appreciate your taking the time out. And do you think what we're seeing, the action in the gold market, I mean, gold's a hair's breadth away from 1700 Silver has busted through $30 an ounce, like Lindsay Lohan out of rehab. And do you think this is the beginning of the end for the cartel? Oh, yeah, it's going to take a while, but exactly. Uh, both gold and silver spent the summer and um, late spring building huge bases from a technical standpoint. The fundamentals are screamingly bullish. Uh, you've got central banks uh, uh, buying now that uh, are making it very difficult for this gold cartel, which is bullion banks and our government and the Bank for International Settlements to keep the price of gold and silver down. And uh, uh, all of a sudden, uh, uh, they broke out of these bases and they followed through to uh, they, and uh, yesterday and today, and it's uh, quite exciting. And um, it's interesting because while supposedly the catalyst was uh, – maybe more quantitative easing by the Fed. I don't buy that so much. That I think it was just there's so much power and demand built up, they couldn't keep it down anymore because the Dow uh, has gone negative on this news. So uh, And supposedly they would trade in sync on that. So something's very different here. I agree with you. Uh, the market has been, for the past two weeks, and I understand I'm not a technical guy, I couldn't trade if my life depended on it, and uh, I just stay away from it. But it seems to me, from an objective observer standpoint, for the past two weeks, the market's been behaving completely different. Uh, you've seen little incremental bumps up every day, and then a big slam comes along, which is much the way it was trading a year or two ago when it had its big move up and you know hit close to 2,000. Have you noticed that yourself? Uh, well, I just know how they, this gold cartel has just kept the price down. I mean, you, and they said it, you just build this massive base, and, and it's technically, it's just so powerful. I, it's uh, it made, uh, uh, it tried to rally all summer, and uh, it made five consecutive lower highs on rallies, and then just, and I'm, with this formation I'm talking about, just blew right through it as the, uh, demand for physical has just completely overpowered the ability of the gold cartel to prevent the price from rising. And, and uh, you just, you, it's almost picture perfect in the sense of what is happening, happening from a fundamental and technical standpoint. Yeah. And there is a certain inevitability to it. And yet when things are inevitable, you still always wonder, well, am I right? Am I wrong? When is it going to happen? You know, or well, you never know else, that. I mean, right? I, I certainly didn't know, uh, I don't know more than anyone else. However, I do say I'm having some fun with this one since because since early July, I've been pounding the table that this would happen in August. We would get with just what occurred. And, of course, it wasn't me, but it was these sources I have that are uh, very well-connected people, and they were correct. So I'm, I'm having fun with that. And in addition, if I'm correct, there's going to be a scandal surfacing sometime in the not too distant future about J.P. Morgan with their short position in silver, and uh, it's going to be more known in the mainstream world, and uh, this could send silver, the price of silver, way, way, way up. But 
as far as the CFTC investigation of alleged manipulation in the silver market, and let's face it, we all know it's there. And I just see that they're going to do the same thing. They're going to pull a Corzine and, oh, there's gambling. No, there's no gambling here. And then they'll just walk out of the gambling hall. And only this time, the gambling hall is going to collapse. Well, we'll see. I mean, I, I can't talk about the CFTC. I know Bart Shilton there. I met him a couple of times. He's a great guy. I call him the Elliot Ness of the agency. He's the one guy in Washington who wants to correct things. But, yeah, he's up against a, a bunch of bureaucrats. I mean, the head of the CFTC, Gary Getz, is a former Goldman Sachs guy. And it just, as you say, it's the same Corzine thing. But we'll see. You never know. Sometimes you can get surprises, and uh, we'll just have to wait and see. If, if, if enough information ever gets to the CFTC's way, may, they may have a tough time letting it go because they're under such pressure for not acting in the appropriate way in other markets. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, Bart seems to be a, a real upstanding guy, that rare government employee who actually wants to do the right thing and believes that his job is to help protect the integrity of the free market. But in the U S and in the world today, the markets have no integrity whatsoever. Do they? Uh, couldn't agree more. It's we don't have free markets. We don't have a free press. Uh, you know, you've got the bond market. Everyone knows rigged. The gold and silver market. God, a camp knows is rigged. And uh, uh, you got the plunge protection team and the counterparty risk management group that supports the stock market. So that's rigged. So you got it all there. Yeah, there's. Um, I was talking to somebody. Uh, I think it was Charles Biederman. I said, "Is there an unrigged market left in the world?" And he paused for a couple of seconds and. Ro- rolled his eyes, thought about it, and said, no. And I think that's what it comes down to. They're all rigged to one extent or another. And maybe orange juice futures, you know, you get your Tropicana and you might get an honest price discovery market for frozen orange juice. But anything else, I just don't see it anymore. And the the whole Liber gate really just blew the lid off of everything. Well, that was a t- tremendous boon for God, when we've been trying to uh, inform the world about how rigged the gold and silver markets have been since January of 1999, and uh, you're right, the LIBOR scandal about manipulation of this key interest rate, which is now acknowledged, uh, has put a lot of people uh, in our camp saying, well, maybe these guys have been got our right to about gold and silver. Why would they not be manipulated? And uh, it's made a, 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 it's really helped us a lot. Yeah, and I mean, how any rational person could look at these markets and say they're not manipulated. There's only one entity on the planet uh, that would, would rush in to sell when the price is going up and rush in to buy, you know, it just defies credulity. Well, we certainly agree. That's what we've been working on for the long time now. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think the thing is going to collapse and Gata will never get its, uh, its, do it will never get the respect that it's due for literally tilting at windmills before anyone knew or suspected that there was any validity to what you guys have uh, have alleged. Well, I appreciate what you're saying, but there there may be some things that will come to light uh, in, uh, within the next month or two that uh, are, I think are going to be an eye-opener, and uh, I think once, once they occur, it'll, stuff's going to come our way. And you think that some major scandals coming, and do you think there'll be an unwinding at the uh, comics? Well, I, I can't say that, but I, I can say that uh, like, I, can't, I can't say any more. I can just say I a major you. scandal is coming. Yeah, well, are we so hardened, though, or is it going to hit? Do you think it'll hit after uh, Labor Day where people might actually be paying attention? Uh, could be. I, I just don't know. I, the timing of these things is very difficult, but uh, it's coming. Yeah, well, there's certainly no shortage of scandal in this day and age and the way that the news media has just put its imprimatur of, uh, of everything's fine here, just move along. That could be the biggest scandal because the media is supposed to be the watchdog. They're supposed to be protecting you along with your government, but more so the media, they're supposed to be blowing the whistle on all the corruption. And yet they're just a pillar of the elite. 
control. Well, that's true. I know this for a fact. I was on CNBC 13 years ago. Ron and Son interviewed me. Been banned ever since in the United States. And we know for a fact that the Bloomberg Gold Reporter, I've known her for 13 years. She's not allowed to mention GATA. Uh, the same is true pretty much with Reuters. And then uh, just my friend Jay Taylor uh, was on the, the Business News Network uh, for Canada, and they said you can't mention GATA. What are they so scared of? If you guys are a the bunch truth. of cranks, <laughs> yeah, you're you're the a truth. bunch of cranks with tin foil hats. Why not uh, mention them? In fact, if you guys weren't telling the truth, hey, tell it to everybody because you're going to be discredited by reality. Okay. And yet, the fact is, the suppression of the Gata movement in itself is very telling. Well, uh, as you say, we're we're um doing our best to get the job done. We sued the Fed, and we got a check from them for one of the things the judge allowed us to uh, to receive, and, and we now have freedom of information requests with the Fed and the Treasury and the State Department, and we're just staying on the case and to get the truth out there, and that's it, that simple. Hey, one of the things that I found really interesting was that during the course of your suit, the Federal Reserve admitted that it doesn't have the gold, that the gold belongs to the Treasury, and that's always been up in the air who actually owns that gold, right? Yeah, it's confusing, actually. You know, uh, from where I come from, whoever owns it, uh, 8,000, I think, uh, oh, 133 ton, 0.5 tons or something like that or something. Uh, our big concern is whether it's encumbered or not, whether we've swapped it with other people's, other countries' gold, and how much gold that you – the U.S. really has it's not encumbered, meaning it uh, we've loaned it out to other countries or or uh, swapped it with other companies' gold has been sold. So there hasn't been a decent audit in such a long time. Nobody knows, and until they get to that point and uh, do on a proper audit like that, then uh, we don't even know what what gold we have. Yeah, that's interesting because Chris Weber wrote a book recently, and he had some correspondence from the Treasury Secretary. It came around the time of, I guess, in the 70s, where the Treasury Department said that they were out of gold to hold up the, the whole gold window to keep it open. And evidently, there could be a lot less gold there than anybody thinks. Well, that's why Ron Paul wants an audit, and so does Ghana. And they're supposedly doing an audit right now, which the government auditing itself, uh, well, you that's could a make... a joke. It's yeah. I mean, any, all your listeners would appreciate that right away. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it's like, all right, so in, the IRS is going to do an audit, but look, we really can't be bothered with you. Would you please audit yourself and send us the results? I mean, it's absurd on its face. That's correct. Yeah, so so the price, it looks like this rally now is for real. The suppression scheme has probably been broken by, by Asia by Asian demand primarily, but I think worldwide demand has been up, but we never really get the accurate picture of what demand no, is. No, that's where it got us started. The mainstream establishment, so the statistics people, uh, are in bed with a bullion banks, and they don't come out with the right supply-demand numbers, so uh, it's all part of the scam. Yeah, well, like all great scams, eventually they come to an end, and when the marks, which in this case is you, me, and the United States public, finds out about it, I'm just hoping there's going to be hell to pay. I'm hoping that you still can get outraged over governmental fraud and misconduct and theft, and that you will make yourselves heard. But, you know, I'm a little dubious about it because nobody understands, you know, Bill, the value of of precious metals and why their money they've been so dumbed down so what if there's no gold in fort knox what how does that affect you right well that's a good point of course uh it's too long to get into now but uh, certainly the russians and chinese know the value of it they're buying it like crazy as are a lot of other people and uh, again it's all the, the american people just aren't allowed to hear the truth it's like god is not allowed to be talked about i mean it's um, it's almost unbelievable but that's the facts and what you're saying is correct Hey, well, just remember, Bill, on FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com, we will never be a gotta-free zone. 
And to find out more about your work, read the blog, uh, where should people go? Well, uh, my colleague Chris Powell, Secretary Treasury, does a great job with uh, the GATA website, GATA.org, and he puts out uh, news material all the time, and that's free. People can go to the La Metropole Cafe, L-E-M-E-T-R-O-P-O-L-E, cafe.com, uh, and sign up for a two-week uh, two week free trial at my site, and then uh, find out if it's a value to them, they can be, subscribe. All right. Hey, excellent, Bill. We appreciate you taking time to talk to us today. And if people want to hear this interview, as well as the other ones you and I have done together and interviews with dozens of luminaries from around the globe, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. We will talk to you again soon, Bill. And looks like your faith is beginning to pay dividends. Well, it's going to be very exciting next couple of months. So uh, it's time to really be paying attention. And thanks very much, Gary. All right. Always a pleasure, Bill. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.